Yeah, time for all the smoke with our friend, former World Series MVP Dave Stewart, who's taken a little time away from the links to uh, cash in on his thoughts regarding the trade deadline and other topics. Stu, always good to see you. Uh, I want to start you with the two pitchers that have changed uniforms in the last 24 hours. Josh Hader going to San Diego, Frankie Montes to the Yankees. Let's start with Hader. For a closer to be traded midseason, is the assimilation automatic or is there an adjustment period that that kind of player will have to go through? Well, with Josh Hader, I think, you know, it's just going to be automatic. This guy's quality. He's an all-star. Um, he's one of the best relievers in the game. And I, and I have to mention, he's one of the best left-handed relievers in the game. You don't find very very many left-handed closers in this game. There have been a few. Wagner is the first one that comes to mind. Um, but this guy is, he's automatic. He's, you know, he's had, had a couple of bad outings, but he's going to do quite well in San Diego, and he's, he's putting himself right in the middle of it all. And I think he's going to be an asset to that baseball team. Is there ever a weird feeling, though, for a kind of co-closer setup? Not that he is a co-closer, but uh, I'm thinking of two situations you were in the midst of. Um, in, in San Diego, when you were the pitching coach, didn't you guys trade for Randy Myers when Trevor was there? And then when you were playing in Oakland, uh, the A's acquired Jeff Russell when Eck was still in midseason form. Can you ever have enough closing talent, I guess is my question. Well, you can't have enough talent that, that makes the game a shorter game is, is what it comes down to. The fewer outs that you can you can put out there with your bullpen, with your bullpen, the better it's gonna be. Now when when we made that trade for Russell with Eck, we knew that Russell was gonna be the guy that pitched in front of Eck and Eck was gonna be the closer. When we got that trade, when we made the trade with Randy Meyer, we knew that Trevor was going to be our closer and Randy Meyer was going to be the guy that pitched in front of him with sometimes an opportunity to close. And so your closer is going to be your closer. But what you end up doing is you make it tough. You make it really tough on the opposition late in the game, similar to what Cincinnati did in 1990 against us. I mean, they had the nasty boys and they had a guy that pitched the seventh, the eighth and the ninth. And those guys were pretty unbeatable. And so all you're doing is making it a much, much more difficult game for the opposition in the late innings. Tell us what you know about uh, what the Yankees have bought here with Frankie Montes going to the Bronx. You've watched him pitch a lot in Oakland. What are Yankee fans getting in this deal? What the Yankees fans are getting is a guy that can go right to the top of their rotation. Frankie can go. He can be a number one. He can be a number two. He can make he be a number three. But he is a frontline rotation guy. He's a guy that goes out and he competes every time he starts a game. He's a guy that throws mid 90s to high 90s with a devastating split finger. Um, this guy is just, I think he's a great pick for any team. People talk about Castillo and how great a pickup that is. This guy is a great pickup for any team that got him and the Yankees got him. And I think that he, that makes them even a deeper team and makes them even more of a favorite to not just win the American League, but to win the World Series. Boy, I think Mets fans are feeling the same way, Stu, getting Jacob deGrom back in the rotation according to plan tomorrow. Uh, talk about that addition for the Mets in, in terms of getting a healthy deGrom for the first time this year. I mean, Jacob deGrom speaks for himself. We all know what Jacob deGrom brings to the table. I've talked to guys who face this guys. I've talked to people who are in the organization with him. And they tell me that there is nobody in baseball that possesses his kind of stuff. And so to get him at this point in the year, at this time in the year, with the rotation that they already have, you know what? Once again, that pushes them to the top of the National League as favorites. I'm a strong believer that pitching is what wins in baseball. Pitching and playing defense, catching the ball, throwing it to the right places. The deeper your pitching staff is, the deeper your starting rotation is, the better you're going to the better your chances are going to be to win sports world lost somebody that uh, you knew very well in NBA legend Bill Russell and uh, as we here at MLB Network continue eulogizing his legacy I want you to listen to an interview that he conducted with MLB Network Stu back in 2010 that might explain for folks at home his connection to baseball listen in one of the first times that I've ever met a guy 
made me speechless. I'm standing there talking to Jackie Robinson and uh, I, I just couldn't imagine anything more significant or good or nice about, than meeting Jackie Robinson in person and to have him call me Bill. It's like, it just doesn't get any better. <laughs> Connected to our game, uh, he ended up as a pallbearer in Jackie Robinson's funeral. And I know because of his Bay Area roots and yours as well, Stu, uh, you had a history with Mr. Russell as well. You know, I had an opportunity to meet him on more than one occasion. Actually, I'd like to say many occasions. And what he said about Jackie Robinson is exactly my sentiment about him when he called me Dave. Um, and I'm calling him Mr. Russell, and he told me to call him Bill, but... A man of that magnitude and what he's done in the game of basketball, but what he's done in this world for this country, um, to call him anything other than other than Mr. Russell would have been an insult. I mean, he's just been a huge impact. He's just been a huge impact, a huge impact on my life, a huge impact in this country, the things that he's done, the things that he stood for. And I sent out a tweet uh, yesterday that if you don't know Bill Russell, if you don't know who he is, then you need to read about him, you need to find out about him and understand who he is, to understand the man that he is. I mean, he's just a tremendous asset to this country, the things that he's done, the things that he's done in the sport, the way he's competed. Just Bill Russell in general. Um, you know, we've lost, we've lost a tremendous man and a tremendous hero. We had that tweet up on the screen a moment ago, Stu, for our viewers to take a look at. Uh, send one more thing out before we say goodbye to you until next visit, and that is Stu's special sauce. Give us a winner on the 10-game schedule tonight. You know, it's, it's, the best, it's the best matchup that you're going to see. It's the Giants and the Dodgers. There's a rivalry there. I love the Dodgers. I love the Giants, but I love Logan Webb. I think Logan Webb tonight is going to pitch seven scoreless innings. He's a soft contact guy. He's, the ball is moving around. He changes speeds. He does all the right things to win baseball games. So I think he's going to pitch seven scoreless. I think that the Giants, I think that the Dodgers, if they get three hits off of this kid in seven innings, it's going to be good. And I know Mookie Betts is hot, and Mookie Betts has been talked about as being one of the best players in the game. But this kid, Logan Webb, he comes to the mound with business on his mind. I think he's going to compete well tonight. The Giants' backs are against the wall. They haven't played very good baseball, but this is the guy that they look to to perform well and do good, do great things for him. So I'm picking Logan Webb over the Giants. Seven innings, scoreless baseball. I must say this. This is the first live prediction that we've gotten from a former World Series MVP who has uh, taken the turn, headed to the back nine, playing golf in Palo Alto. Network history today, Stu. And we appreciate <laughs> you for it, man. Thanks as always. Looking forward to visiting with you again soon. Matt, it's always good talking to you. Thank you guys for having me on. Watch that prediction, brother. It's real. There it is.